This is Jupiter Today for the 20th of March, 2015. Jupiter Today is a daily podcast focusing attention on the dynamic Jupiter system for the purpose of monitoring activity. Today is the vernal equinox that takes place at 2245 UTC. There's a possibility that I won't be doing a podcast tomorrow since the equinoxes and solstices are my adopted holidays. I'd also like to announce that I've reached over 1,000 views and YouTube has decided to give me my own URL now. So thank you to everyone who has viewed these podcasts over the past several months. So today there's 10 Jupiter satellite events and 3 satellite mutual events. At zero hours UTC, EO begins the day in quadrant two, heading west, near its transit. Europa starts the day in quadrant four, heading east. And Ganymede is also in quadrant four, heading east. And Callisto is going to spend all day in quadrant four, heading east. At zero hours, 27 minutes, EO begins that transit. And at 1.20, the shadow of EO ingresses. At 2.44 UTC, the transit of EO ends, and at 3.38 UTC, the shadow of EO egresses. At 5.39 to 5.44 UTC, EO eclipses Europa. That's a 4.7 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.302 arc seconds and an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.604 magnitudes. Pretty close to Jupiter though, 10.2 arc seconds and EO and Europa are 41.87 arc seconds apart. Visibility for this event is North America, Western South America, and most of the Pacific. By 6 hours UTC, EO has successfully transited and is now in quadrant 3, heading west. And Europa is going to be moving behind Jupiter soon. And that actually takes place at 6.27 UTC. Europa moves behind Jupiter. From 10.22 to 10.32, EO occults Ganymede. And that's a 9.7 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.321 arc seconds. And an estimated magnitude flux drop of 0.294 arc seconds. And it's a good distance away from Jupiter, 100.17 arc seconds apart. And, as you can see, Eos is on the Earth side of Jupiter, and Ganymede's on the far side of Jupiter, so that's a nice, long path. The visibility for this is Western North America and the Pacific, including you folks out in Hawaii. And at 1109 UTC, Europa reappears from Jupiter's shadow. By 12 hours UTC, EO is at its western elongation, going to be moving into quadrant 4, heading east. And Europa is now firmly in quadrant 1, heading east. And from 1340 to 1402 UTC, EO eclipses Ganymede. It's a 21.5 minute event with an impact parameter of 0.112 arc seconds, and that creates a nice deep eclipse. 0.769 magnitudes and it's a good distance away from Jupiter as well 61.45 arc seconds with EO and Ganymede being 39.15 arc seconds apart and the visibility for this event is Asia and Australia by 18 hours UTC EO is now firmly in quadrant 3 heading west and at 1923 UTC, Ganymede moves behind Jupiter. At 2145 UTC, EO moves behind Jupiter. At 2303 UTC, Ganymede reappears from behind Jupiter. And roughly four minutes later, Ganymede moves into the shadow of Jupiter. So there's now a gap between the edge of Jupiter and the edge of Jupiter's shadow, as seen from our point of view. And at zero hours UTC, 
EO is still moving behind Jupiter, but going to be going into quadrant one, heading east. And Ganymede is still moving behind Jupiter, at least Jupiter's shadow, and is going to be moving into quadrant one, heading east. Orbital ribbons for today. These are the spatial and temporal connections between the four Galilean moons. Here's Io, Europa, Ganymede, Callisto, same orbits you just saw. There's the position of Jupiter. And so here's the connection between Io and Europa, Io and Ganymede, Io and Callisto, Europa and Ganymede, Europa and Callisto, and finally Ganymede and Callisto. And then I combine all these and get rid of the lines to get that for today. And that's a pretty interesting shape. 24 hours of Jupiter sky. Standing on the equator of Jupiter, looking out. We're at a longitude of zero degrees. And Jupiter rotates a couple of times over a 24 hour period. All four moons in the same sky there. There goes Eo passing in front of Ganymede and winking out into Jupiter's shadow. The red spot crosses Jupiter's meridian twice today, first at 7.05 and the second at 17.01 UTC. There were no new images and no new radio data and no new papers. So at zero hours UTC, the position of Jupiter on Earth's celestial sphere is a right ascension of 9 hours, 2 minutes, 57.3 seconds, and a declination of positive 17 degrees, 51 minutes, 13.1 seconds. The angular separation between Jupiter and the Sun, as seen from Earth, is 134.135 degrees, and that's 1.057 degrees less than what it was yesterday. The phase angle, which is the angle between the Sun and Earth as seen from Jupiter, is 7.685 degrees, and that's 0 0.141 degrees greater than what it was yesterday. The distance between Jupiter and the Earth is 688,677,738 kilometers, and that's 1,708,215 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. That gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Earth of 71,175.63 kilometers per hour, and that's 1,304.13 kilometers per hour faster than what it was yesterday. The distance between the Sun and Jupiter today is 799,562,914 kilometers. And that's 44,428 kilometers greater than what it was yesterday. And that gives a radial velocity between Jupiter and the Sun of 1,851.17 kilometers per hour. And that's 1.62 kilometers per hour slower than what it was yesterday. The central meridian at zero hours UTC, CM1, 141.13 degrees. CM2, 201.48 degrees. CM3, 120.98 degrees. Time of this recording is 133 UTC on the 20th of March, 2015. So please subscribe. And thank you to everyone who is subscribing and watching these podcasts. You can send your 
images and comments, questions, suggestions to the email shown. And until tomorrow, I bid you peace.